Hello and welcome to Guy Logic Gaming. My name is Temko and this is Guardians of Ember, a new 2D hack and slash pseudo MMO, much like in the vein of quite a few other games that have come out, like Path of Exile and Grim Dawn and other games in the same genre, like Diablo and so on, except in an MMO flavor. So, what is this all about? What is going on? Well, the game just come out into early access. That means this is a early access review. Now, why do we review games in early access? There's two exceptions to the rule. Where we normally don't review games in early access, that is when games are charging money. And this game does. So we are going to review it because as of this point, it is a commercially available product and people are going to buy into it. So they deserve to be informed about what is going on. And what is going on with this game? Now, before I dive into the gameplay proper, and if you're looking at the screen going, oh, you only have a level 5 character, what's going on with this, Stemco? You can't do that. Let me show you that I've had plenty of hours in this game during the technical alpha and beta tests prior to the early access release. But as the game was wiped during early access, I have to start over from scratch with a new character. So don't be alarmed. This level 5 character is in fact a many times over level 5 character. So let's go ahead and dive into some settings and talk about that. First things, there's mostly display and audio controls. And while you might think this is very lacking, it has a surprising number of options. While it doesn't have full screen window mode, it has both AAA, TAA, as FXAA. It has texture presets. It has resolutions for quite a large range. I'm not certain it supports 21 by nine. Do check that out on the Steam forums or other websites. As I do not have a 21 by nine monitor, it's possible these are hidden. And then we have full screen or window mode, as well as some feasting you can turn on or off. There is some visual quality that doesn't get explained, which is a bit of a shame, but this boils down to the level of detail you'd like to have in the game, as well as some anisotropic filtering. Bloom, full screen glow, and depth of field are next up on the line, with some shader quality, lightning quality, volumetric lightning, FX quality, and so on and so forth, providing quite a few aspects you can customize in this title. No complaints here at all. This is really, really good. If I have a minor nitpick on this menu is the fact that there is no colorblind mode, which again, it's an indie title and we can live without that, but it's still something that would have been nice to have and that nothing is really explained. I mean, yes, sure, we know what shader quality means is the quality of your shaders. And we know probably what vegetation distance means. But what is a thousand? Is that a thousand ticks? Is that a thousand pixels? Is that a thousand looking distance yards of whatever measurement they are using? None of that gets explained. And that is always a bit of a shame in a game where you are spending more time customizing the way the game looks just to get a good feel for it and optimizing your performance than you're actually playing in the initial few hours. And that is a bit frustrating. Other than that, we have audio, which has quite a few presets, as well as the ability to change the amount of times the music loops. The game doesn't have a large set of in-game music, and though that may come during later periods in the early access stage, as of right now, the music isn't bad, but very limited. And that is a bit of a shame, so I'm glad they added this option. We have voice volume, UI sounds, environmental sounds, sound effects, and so on and so forth. Quite a few options here available, which is really, really good. One thing I do not like is the fact that there is no rebindable keys at all and that is damned frustrating. And especially in a Diablo-esque game, having rebindable keys just so I can rebind them to, for example, a gamepad or a external controller or even rebind keys to my multi-key mouse. None of that is available and that is really annoying and I do really hope they add that very, very soon. Because right now there's a lot of issues with the game controls in terms of key bindings, that just don't feel great. They feel a little bit archaic, they feel a bit off, and that isn't that great, so that is a problem. But let's go ahead and dive into the game and talk all about that before we... If we dive into the game, there are two things that I wanna know before we dive any further into exploring the game and everything like that. From a graphical and performance perspective, the game does okay. It is not fantastic, it is not phenomenal, but it does okay. The art style the game has is consistent and it does try to convey a very specific way of conveying graphics. Nothing we need to complain about. There is a large range of zoomable options and as I said, the characters don't look half bad. There are some issues in regards to clipping and there's definitely some issues in regards to shading and stuff like that. So that is a bit of a letdown and the green graphics don't look that high fidelity. Which again is a bit of a letdown, but from an indie studio and from a game that is supposed to be an MMO, so it's expecting a lot of 
on-screen characters, creating a lot of graphical issues. MMOs never look as good as most other single player or even low number multiplayer games do. So that is something to keep in mind, but it doesn't look terrible. And it has quite a few options as well that really allow for the MMO feel of the game. The Lepers haven't just tacked on MMO just for MMO's sake. They are trying to incorporate events, they are trying to incorporate player grouping, they are trying to incorporate quite a few things into the gameplay, which is really, really good. But there is a problem with this. That problem is twofold. One, as it stands, the game is ridiculously laggy. You can see it before me now. Everything desyncs. There are massive timeouts. And as I've released, the servers have been more down than up. That is not okay at all. And that should not be. And as you can see, there's massive pop-in. There's massive delays. There's massive issues in interfaces opening. You can see me getting damage for characters that are not even there. Attacking doesn't really do much of anything. Everything sort of gets delayed. This is currently not playable. Now this may be something that gets resolved in the next couple of hours or even next couple of days. And in that case, most of that is okay. But even then, even in this situation where you do not have a delay, there is still a massive amount of delay before commands are triggered. Now developers have said this is actually intentional in many situations. Obviously not the delays and timeouts I'm receiving now, but just the amount of delays that every action is going to have. That is as expected, they say, and that is the way it should be because those are charged attacks. I'm not sure what they consider to be a charged attack, but in most of my situations that I have found, there isn't a lot of charging I want to do with these attacks. In fact, most of what I want to do is not have this delay, and that is a major issue with the game. Even if everything ran as smooth as it could and should, even then, everything feels very floaty. Unlike Diablo or Grim Dawn or even Path of Exile, all the interactions from movement, from combat, from the way you might do certain actions in terms of interaction with objects, in terms of triggering attacks, in terms of uh, repositioning yourself, everything feels really sluggish in this game. In fact, targeting enemies and clicking on them, and you can hear me clicking because I'm smashing my mouse button in, it just feels so very sluggish that it does remove a lot of the enjoyment from the title. And that, I feel, is the biggest criticism at this game. Yes, there are some other things that are very annoying. I personally don't like the way the upgrade system with abilities works, uh, where it forces you to upgrade your ability into very different things. I don't personally like the way they have a cash up in a fully paid game. Again, I don't like it, but I can accept it based on it being very good. It's not. I can accept the game having a multiplayer functionality, in fact being fully multiplayer. I don't mind that, I do not mind MMOs at all, even though I do not play many. But at least make certain that your game runs at least at a passable performance, or at least without any latency issues, and that is a problem. Many players are also reporting performance issues with the game, and again, that too is a massive problem. So as it stands right now, there are a ton of issues on the technical side of this game, and we have not even gotten into the actual gameplay. Moving away from all the technical stuff the game has on hand, and there is a lot of it that is a problem at the very least, and unforgivable at the very worst. And there's quite a few situations where these issues are unforgivable. The fact that the servers were down for most of today is unforgivable after three technical performance tests. The fact that there's massive timeouts and latency issues when they could have projected their amount of players down to the last few hundred based on earlier gameplay prognosis as well as the Indiegogo backers they had for their crowdsource project and they haven't and that is not okay. So being done crucifying them on that front, there is a couple of other things you might want to take note of. First things first, the game plays a lot like Diablo or any other dungeon crawly gameplay combat system. Hack and slash, loot and shooter, what we more call them, these are staple of games that many people love and enjoy dearly. And these games are generally defined by the fact that they require you to get a lot of loot and then upgrade that loot and then upgrade your character and get more better loot and then get cool abilities and blow up a bunch of enemies. That is the basis. So first things first, let's talk about character and ability upgrades. Character-wise, you can level up various stats, and those stats give you a passive increase in various abilities. From energy damage, to critical hit chance, to attack speed, block chance, they give you an affinity with healing, attack, or defense. And you can also have some various personal skills, such as armor smithing, blacksmithing, crafting abilities in general. Overall, what you'd expect. But where does the loot come in? Well, you have a bunch of loot you can get, and as always, this loot you can equip, 
and there is some very cool stuff in here. Sadly, none of this cool stuff is actually worth your time for most of the duration. As it stands, there is no reason for me to wear light armor as opposed to heavy armor because my abilities work just fine. I mean, there is no restriction placed on me. Here you go, heavy armor. Is there any restriction put on me for that? No, none at all. So there is no reason for me to wear light armor outside of aesthetic preference because they are fundamentally worse in every regard, at least at low level. Higher level, you do get some different cool abilities on your items that help you in certain ways. But those are very few and far in between. As it stands, you can see that these are all passive modifiers to various items and various aspects. We'll gain healing power, plus 7.9. Yay! Now equip that item, now I have some more healing power. I also have slightly less defense, which means I take more hits. I shouldn't be taking hits at all, but that is as it is. I don't like this system. I have never liked this type of system. The massive issues I have had with Diablo 3 when it initially released was the fact that loot was very restrictive and the loot that was available was very dull. In fact, that is the biggest issue with Diablo 3 in general. Later on, with the expansion, Reaper of Souls, and massive patching from Blizzard, that game has gotten very, very good. We have games like Green Dawn that have known from the very get-go that they need to provide interesting and unique loot at all levels and at all times. Games like this haven't, and that is very notable. I'm still using a random staff. Do I care what staff this is? No, not really, because the staff in question doesn't make any lick of difference to me in any way, or shape, or form. While in certain scenarios, in certain situations, I could probably get around to getting better weapons, or maybe some fire weapons, or even maybe some very cool items, the fact of the matter is, I don't really care, because the weapons aren't that cool. So I'll just be looking at stats. They don't look cool, they don't feel cool, they don't have any special effects, fire damage or AOE blasts or bleeding or anything like that and that is a massive shame and I do hope the developers add an enormous amount of modifiers to all loot tires from low level to high level. But if you take a look beyond that and take a look at the various abilities you unlock, we can see and say, okay, so there's primary skills, secondary skills, and then you unlock various advanced skills. You unlock these advanced skills as you progress through the various levels. And then you can stick points into these various skills based on a modifier and then unlock those skills. So as you see, I have one point now. And if I want to upgrade my Fox Spear into something else like the Icicle Spear, I have to select one of these two minor upgrades. Let's say I go with attack speed and I add my Fox Spear to my ability. I can't use both at the same time, obviously, but I can use this ability. And the same goes my primaries, secondaries, and then my advanced skills, which queue up in one through four. Pretty logical. All these abilities are generally very, very enjoyable. I enjoy using a large variety of them at any given stage because they are pretty well implemented. And this goes for most classes. There is no reason for me not to use some of these abilities to the fullest of my extent. They are really enjoyable and really fun to use. Now, moving away from that, there is a couple of other issues I'd like to highlight. Most of them boil down to the AI opponent. That is frankly, well, atrocious. There is no reason for this AI to be this bad. Now, many games have had bad AIs over the last, oh well, forever. But generally speaking, games like this, like Diablo, like uh, Grim Dawn, like Path of Exile, have a very excellent Horde AI. What do I mean with Horde AI? One of the major things that you'll notice with games like this is that most enemies individually aren't very powerful. You kill them in, in very few blows, and generally speaking, you want to do that. You want to rush through enemies, kill bunches at the same time, feel like a powerful god. And this game does that in spades, but the problem is that the AI doesn't even think. They don't try to flank you, there is no AI abilities that they use to like, flush you out. If you have a large shield, they don't try to use counter spells. If they notice you are fleeing away, they don't switch to ranged abilities. The ranged dudes never reposition if they see you're standing behind a wall. There's a lot of minor things that, while not particularly horrible in and of themselves, when combined with a large number of issues with the abilities, does provide a very subpar dungeon crawling experience. So overall, this game does a few things very right. It has a very cool ability set, very cool leveling mechanics, it provides a very interesting world, and it provides a very cool aesthetic, even does the MMO thing pretty decently. But on the overall issues, from a technical perspective, 
from a loot and content perspective and from a general perspective of just not being anything worth paying attention to in terms of not just be not being finished but frankly lacking core functionality like rebindable keys and yet here we stand being released commercially in early access delayed several months to work on technical issues and none of those technical issues have been resolved they have added systems and they have patched changes in, but none of the systems in the game have actively been fixed in terms of performance, in terms of delays, in terms of latency, in terms of bugs. All of those are still there. And that is a major issue with this title and with their projective timeline of being three to six months before they release fully. I find that extremely optimistic as their stated goal in that time period is mostly to do story expansion for the later stages and localization. As it stands, I find it very hard to attempt to recommend this title at both its current price point and its projected business model with a cash shop included. I strongly suggest just checking out Grim Dawn or Path of Exile or even Diablo 3. They are better games in every regard that are not fundamentally broken in terms of its technical aspect. Whereas this game has potential but it hasn't touched that potential in over three months of technical tests. And that is a damn shame. And I do hope they fix that during early access. I just have zero expectation that that will actually happen. So Guardians of Ember out today, December 13th on Steam Early Access. Check it out if you are interested. There's a link in the description below. Though I strongly urge you to hold off until at the very least the various performance issues are addressed if not holding off entirely until they show what they are planning to do with the rest of their title and their business model. So thank you for watching. If you liked this video, press the like button below. If you didn't like this video, there's a dislike button for exactly that and leave a comment. Tell us what you thought of this game, tell us what we can do better, or tell us what you liked in general. We want to hear back from all of you. And if you want to see more content like this on the channel, just press that subscribe button down below and we will deliver. And until then, I wish you a good day and until next time, right here on Guy Logic.